जय गोपी जन बला गिरिवार धारी जय गोपी जन बला गिरिवार धारी जय यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीरा बनारी यमुना तीरा बनाचारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जम विष्णुपाद परमहंस प्रग्रजा का आचार्य अष्ट तरष्ट श्री श्रीमद अभय चरण भक्ति वृंद प्रभुपाद के आनंद कोति वैष्णवृंद के नाम आचार्य शहरिरास्ता के प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अर्वेद गडाधर श्री वास गौर भक्त वृंद के श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ राधा कुंड श्याम गोवर्धाम के वृंदावन धाम के मायपुर धाम के गंगामयी के यमुनामयी के तुलसी देवी के भक्ति देवी के जाय निताय गौर ऑल ग्लोरी स्त्र संबल दिवोतीस ऑल ग्लोरी स्त्र संबल दिवोतीस ऑल ग्लोरी स्त्र संबल दिवोतीस ऑल ग्लोरी ऑल ग्लोरी से श्री गण श्री गौरंगा ऑल ग्लोरी से श्री प्रभुपाद ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय So reading from Shana Bhagavatam, Kanto 9, chapter 20, and text 22-26, yeah? So I'll read then from the the text 22 to 25, and then we'll read from the board. Reto da putro nayati naradeva yamakshaya tam chasya dhata garbhasya satyam aha shakuntala. Translation. Translation and purports by Śrīla Prabhupāda. O King Dushpanta, he who discharges semen is the actually fa actual father, and his son saves him from the custody of Yamaraj. You are the actual procreator of this child. Indeed, Shakuntala is speaking the truth. Purport. Upon hearing the omen, Maharaj Dushmanta accepted his wife and Jat, according to Vedic Smriti. Punnamo Narakadhyasma Pitram Trayate Sutaha. 
तस्मापुत्र प्रोक्ता स्वयं एवा स्वयं भुवा बिकॉज ए सन डेलीवर्स इज फादर फ्रॉम पनिशमेंट इन द हेल कॉल पुत्र द सन इज ऑल्सो कॉल पुत्र अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस प्रिंसिपल वेन देर इज ए डिसग्रीमेंट बिटवीन द फादर एंड मदर इट इज द फादर नॉट द मदर हु इज डेलीवर्ड बाय द सन बट if the wife is faithfully and firmly adherent to the to her husband when the father is delivered the mother is also delivered consequently there is no such thing as divorce in the vedic literature a wife is always trained to be chaste and faithful to her husband for this helps her achieve deliverance from any abominable material condition this verse clearly says putra nayati naradeva yamakshayat the son saves his father from the custody of yamaraj it never says putra nayati mataram the son saves his mother the seed giving father is delivered not the store keeping mother consequently husband and wife should not separate under any condition for if they have a child whom they raise to be a vaishnava he can save both the father and the mother from the custody of amaraj and punishment in hellish life text 23 pitar yu parate sopi chakravati maha yashah mahima giyate tasya harer amsha bhuvo bhuvi translation Shukra Goswami said when Maharaj Dushmanta passed away from this earth his son became the emperor of the world the proprietor of the seven islands he is referred to as a partial representation of the supreme personality of godhead in this world purport in bhagavad gita 1041 it is said yad yad vibhuti matsatvam श्रीमत ऊर्जित पार्शलेशन ऑफ दुप्रीम गोडेर वन दन ऑफ मार दुष्मेड इन वे Well, 24 to 23. Verse 24 to 25. Chakram Dakshina Hast, Chakram Dakshina Haste Sya, Padma Kosho Sya Pada Yoh, Ije Maha Bisheke Na, Sobhi Shikto Dhira Vibhu, Pancha Pancha Shata Medyair, Ganga Yam Anu Vajidi. मेयम पुरोधा यमुना अनुचा प्रभु एंड नाउ वी रीड फ्रॉम द बोर्ड टेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी सिक्स अष्ट सप्तति मेदियाश्वान बबंध प्रददत वसु भारत हिदौष्मेर अग्नि सची गुण चिता सहस्रम बदवशो यस्मण गिभेजिरे अष्ट सप्तति मेध्याश्वान्बंड प्रदु भरत सेतर अग्निशी गुणे चिता सहस्रम बदवशो यस्म ब्राह्मणा गाविभेजिरे 
अष्टतिमैश्वान् बबंड प्रदु भरत हि दौष्मर आग्निशी गुणे चिता सहस्रम बदवशो यस्मिन् ब्राह्मणा गिभेजिर अष्ट सप्तति मैश्वान् बबंध प्रदु भरत हि दौष्मर आग्निशी गुणे चिता सहस्रम बदवशो यस्मिन् ब्राह्मणा गिभेजिर अष्ट सप्त सेवेन्टी एट मेदिया बबंध हि बाउंड प्रदत गेव इन चरिटी वसु रिच भारत ऑफ महाराज भारत he indeed dashmante the son of maharaj dashmanta agni he the sacrificial fire such a guna on an excellent site chitaha established sahasram thousands Badvashaha, 
by the number of one badwa. One badwa equals thirteen thousand eighty-four. Yasmin, in which sacrifices? Brahmanaha, all the Brahmanas present. Gaha, the cows. Vibhajire, receive the respective share. Translation and purport by Srila Prabhupada. Maharaj Bharat. The son of Dushmanta had the mark of Lord Krishna's disc on the palm of his right hand and he had the mark of a lotus world on the sole of his, lot of his feet. By worshipping the Supreme Personality of God with, with, a garland, with a grand ritualistic ceremony, he became the emperor and master of the entire world. Then, under the priesthood of Mahametya, Brigumuni, he performed 55 horse sacrifices on the bank of the Ganges, beginning from its mouth and ending at its source, and 78 horse sacrifices on the bank of Yamuna, beginning from the confluence and Prayag and ending at the source. He established a sacrificial fire on an excellent site, and he distributed great wealth to the Brahmanas. Indeed, he distributed so many cows that each of thousands of Brahmanas had one badva, 13,084, as his share. Purport As indicated here by the word Dushmanter Agnik Sachi Gune Chitaha, Bharata, the son of Maharaj Dushmanta, arranged for many ritualistic ceremonies all over the world, especially all over India on the banks of the Ganges and Yamuna from the mouth to the source and all such sacrifices are performed in very distinguished places. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 3.9 Yajnyarta karmano nyatra loko yam karma bandhanaha Work done as a sacrifice for Vishnu has to be performed. Otherwise, work binds one to this material world. Everyone should engage in the performance of Yajna and the sacrificial fire should be ignited everywhere. The entire purpose being to make people happy, prosperous and progressive in spiritual life. Of course, these things were possible before the beginning of Kali Yuga before, because these were qualified Brahmanas who could perform such Yajnas. For the present, however, the Brahma Vivarta Purana enjoys Ashwamedam Gava Lambam Sanyasam Palapaitrikam Devarena Sutot Patim Kalau Pancha Vivar Jayet. In this age of Kali, five acts are forbidden offering a horse in sacrifice, offering a cow in sacrifice, accepting the order of Sanyas, offering oblation of flesh to the forefathers and begetting children in the wife of one's brother. In this age, such yagyas as the, as the Ashwamedha Yagya and Bhomedha Yagya are impossible to perform because there are neither sufficient riches nor qualified Brahmanas. This verse says, Mamateyam Purodhaya Maharaj Bharat engaged the son of Mamata, Brigumuni, to take charge of performing this yagya. Now, however, such brahmanas are impossible to find. Therefore, the shastras recommend yagyai sankirtana, sankirtana prayai yajanti his sumedasaha. Those who are intelligent should perform the sankirtan yagya inaugurated by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna Pranant Vishakrishnam Sanko Pangastra Parsharam Yagyak Sankirtana Prayar Yajanti Hisume Dasaha. In this age of Kali, people endowed with sufficient intelligence will worship the Lord, who is accompanied by his associates by performance of Sankirtan Yagya. Bhagavatam 11.5.32. Yagya must be performed, for otherwise people will be engaged in sinful activities and will suffer immensely. 
Therefore, the Krishna Consciousness Movement has taken charge of introducing the chanting of Hare Krishna all over the world. This Hare Krishna movement is also Yagya, but without the difficulties involved in securing paraphernalia and qualified Brahmanas. This congregational chanting can be performed anywhere and everywhere. If people somehow or other assemble together and are induced to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare, all the purposes of Yagya will be fulfilled. The first purpose is that there must be sufficient rain, for without rain there cannot be any produce. Anad Bhavanti Bhutani Prakyat Ananta Sambhava. All our necessities can be produced simply by rainfall. Kamam Avarsha Parjanya. And the earth is the original source of all necessities. Sarvakama Dugha Mahi. In conclusion, therefore, in this age of Kali, people all over the world should refrain from the four principles of sinful life. Illicit sex, meat eating, intoxication and gambling. And in a pure state of existence should perform the simple yagya of chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Then the earth will certainly produce all the necessities for life and people will be happy economically, politically, socially, religiously and culture culturally. Everything will be in proper order. Hare Krishna. So we see Shri Prabhupada is giving many informations. He is giving us many clues how we should live our lives as devotees. He is giving, I mean in this verse we see the example of Bharat Maharaj, we see the example of uh, Dushmanta Maharaj. So, they are capable of keeping themselves and properly Krishna conscious by offering Yagya. Now, at, at the age of when they lived, then, yeah, it was a different way how one engages his activities in the yagya and therefore connects his activities to the Supreme Lord. So at that time performing Ashwagana sacrifices, offering the horses, then that was allowed. Why? Because by doing so then now uh, he got the benefit and the horse get benefit. But that was only possible because there were such priests who could properly chant the mantras, who could with the proper consciousness perform the sacrifice and therefore the result was such that the horse even after being killed actually you know, rejuvenates. He gets born as as a in different body as a young one so that that is done but the qualification must be there nowadays there's no such qualification people kill seemingly they say no sometimes they say it's a sacrifice but they cannot rejuvenate the animal. So it's not sacrifice, it's killing. And therefore it is prohibited. So, as Srila Prabhupada says, yes, yagya has to be done. But what is the definition of yagya? Then as, no, 
we read. Yagya is activity connected to the Lord. So these activities as the Ashwamedha, Gomedha, Yagyas, they are not allowed in this age. So what do we do? Then we, are, we perform the Yagya of Sankirtan. That's the recommendation for this age. That Sankirtan is directly chanting of the holy name of the Lord. And we are pleasing the Lord by chanting his names. And our consciousness gets purified, gets elevated. So therefore, it's the easiest way how we can engage ourselves in devotional service. And at the same time, then we don't have to be worried about uh, all these other necessities which are needed for this big elaborate yagyas. You need a qualified priest for those. You need uh, very, you know, a lot of money to prepare. So there is no need for that. And it's simply by chanting. So that's great. We should be just chanting the holy name. And yes, if we can do that, then we should. Remember the Lord 24 hours a day. Just chanting. But it's not so easy. Right? So then what does the Shastra prescribe? In Parma Purana we hear. Always remember the Lord and never forget the Lord. So it's a one instruction. But the proper instruction is also always followed by prohibition. So the instruction is to always remember the Lord. That's what we want to achieve eventually. That whatever we do, no matter, we always remember the Lord. But if for some reason we are not remembering the Lord because we are engaged in some other activities, we should be, but no, because of our mind, we get focused on something else and then we are not necessarily remembering the Lord, then what are we going to do? Then we should never forget Him. There are, these, are not the, these are not the same. When we are always remembering, there is no question of forgetting. So, us, then uh, always remembering the Lord, we are safe. But if we are not on the platform yet, we may remember the Lord maybe no, one, two, three, four hours a day. Maybe eight hours, maybe twelve hours. But still there is some time when we don't. What do we do? Because then we didn't fulfill the condition to always remember Him. But that's good. When we change Japa, right? Okay, so then we focus. One and a half, two hours, 16 rounds, we may fully be focused on chanting and therefore we remember the Lord. But what happens after we finish the Japa? Like Shri Prabhupada, no? So, okay, okay, I finished 16 rounds and now I can do whatever no, I want to do. No, it's not like that. No, one cannot do whatever he wants to do. It is also prescribed what one should do. Of course, it's applied for devotees. You cannot no, order anyone. You cannot order someone to do something which he doesn't want to do. But it is recommended Then uh, we should not forget the Lord. And how do we not forget the Lord? By engaging ourselves 
in the activities such a way it reminds us of the Lord. So, when we cook, for example, we may not remember the Lord. We may be just, you know, I'm making the roti, I'm making the sabji, and, or oh, did I put salt, or what about the spices, and no, we are fully focused on, then, on the cooking. We may not remember, but then, what do we do? Why are we cooking? We should not forget that. I am cooking because I want to offer that to the Lord. I want the Lord to have something nice. Something so that you know, He can enjoy. With that activity, with that consciousness, I start the activity. Then, throughout the activity, I may remember just that I am doing this uh, activity and fully focused on that. But why am I doing it? Because I want to please the Lord. So I'm not forgetting Him. And how do I you know, prove that I don't forget the Lord? Because when I finish cooking, then I offer it. So the offering is there. And only when it is offered, then I take prashad. Without that, it's, it's not thinkable even to eat it. It's not for me. It's for the Lord. That way we don't forget Him. And that way then uh, we can be always focused. Sakama Bhakti. I am doing what I like to do. Now, okay. Say so the cooking again. Now, I am I'm cooking what I like. I don't know what Krishna likes, but I like this. So, I do that. But then, I'm not going to eat it until it's offered. So, that way, it gets sanctioned. Because we are doing even the activity which I like, but I don't, I'm not forgetting the Lord. He is there. Without Him, I'm not touching it. Then, if we progress farther, then not forgetting this activity, not forgetting that we offer it to Him, then we will start naturally thinking what Krishna likes. What am I supposed to cook for him? I always cook the same thing because I like it, but does Krishna like it? Then we may figure out. Guru, Sadhu, Shastra, figure out what does Krishna like? And let's cook that. Then we cook Thinking about Krishna. We are always con conscious of Krishna. It's not about me, it's about Him. So throughout the cooking we remember Him. And that way, so then Nishkama Bhakti. And not through the performance of us being fully focused on the Lord, then we come to the platform of Prema Bhakti. Where we are just fully surrendered. We are one with the Lord. As Shri Prabhupada in Bhagavatam, he actually says, the devotees are the real monists. No? They are, no, monist means the one who, who merges, right? But Shri Prabhupada says, no, this is not the real monism. The real monism is that to be one with the Lord, but be one with his desires. So that the devotee, he is so absorbed in Krishna that he knows what Krishna wants. So he is like one in the thought. There is also in the, in the Shastra definition of or classification of uh, servant. There are four levels of servants. 
right? The first class servant. What, who is first class? First class servant, then he does his service to the master without being asked. He knows what needs to be done. Like an example, sometimes uh, the, the devotees you know, serving Shri Prabhupada, then they also, they were so tuned in you know, to, to serve that uh, Shri Prabhupada sometimes, uh, I mean, they were saying that Shri Prabhupada uh, sometimes looked at the fan. And if the fan was off, means it should go on. And if the fan was on, that means it should slow down or should go off. So, they, it's just by a look, then immediately knowing what the person wants. No need to be spoken. That's a first class servant. Second class servant is that when he is asked to do something and it gets done immediately, perfectly. The second class servant. Third class servant is that when he is asked to do something, he will do. But in his own time, with a delay, he will uh, take his time. Because now I'm busy, yeah, but yeah, I'll, I'll do it, don't worry. Oh, I forgot, yeah, I'll, but I'll still do it. So there's a third class servant. And fourth class servant is he will not do. He may say yes, yes, but won't do. So, the Shastra recommends that we should be at least the second class servant. Then, the consciousness of the servant gets purified, gets elevated. But if we are putting our false ego, I want to do, I'll do it later, I will not do now, I don't like doing it, then the purification you know, will be slow, delayed. So, then we need to know we are still having some, some anarthas, some desires, conditioning. So, and because of that, then our activities are sometimes not being maybe you know, completely pure. So, in that case, then we are not remembering Krishna. And then we should not forget him. So what do we do? And that's what no, Shri Prabhupada mentions here. Right. Yeah, the end. In conclusion, therefore, in this age of Kali, people all over the world should refrain from the four principles of sinful life, illicit sex, meat eating, intoxication and gambling, and in a pure state of existence should perform the simple yagya of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Then the earth will certainly produce all the necessities for life, and people will be happy economically, politically, socially, religiously and culturally. Everything will be in proper order. So now, let's go through the points, right? The earth will certainly produce all the necessities for life. Is it happening? There are so many droughts, floods, right? The, the weather is crazy. Now, I heard in, in Europe, it was like a spring weather. So then, the trees started to flower and frost comes and all the fruits are destroyed. That's it. There will be no, no season where the frost was. No fruits. So, it was not like that before, right? Weather is more crazy. The earth is not producing all the necessities, people, now we cannot say that uh, 
people will be happy economically. Everybody is trying to get more, more, not satisfied. How much you want? No, as much as I can get, as much as I can steal. No, whatever it is, by any means. And now, if I have crores or thousands of crores, it's not enough. Because if I have more, then I can spend more, I can enjoy more, and there is no limit to sense gratification. So, economically, not really happy. And then there are people you know, who don't have much. But, that's an interesting phenomenon too. There are people, like in countries, and it's mainly in like the, the Asian countries. They don't have necessarily much, but they are happy. I think there were, uh, I think Philippines is one of the, no, regarded as one of the most like happy countries. The people are happy. Why? Because they are satisfied what they have. It may not be enough. I mean, may, may, may be just enough, maybe not too much in comparison to how much you can get uh, in the Western countries. But you can cook your meal. You have your family. You can sit down together. You can talk together. You can relate to each other. You can help each other. That's happiness. What else do you need? But then these people, even though they don't have much money, they are very rich because they don't need anything more. What they have, it's enough. But then you have people who are very rich and those people, that's not enough for them. They want more and more and more. So those people, even though materially they have a lot, but they are poor because they don't have enough. So that's a problem. So people are not happy economically. People are not really happy politically. All the parties, right? Now, whom to vote? BJP or Trinamul or Congress or no? Whom? Who, who is good? They are all politicians. They may be good today, tomorrow they will not. They have their own agendas. Shira Prabhupada was warning us we should never get into politics. So when there are some politicians, yes, no, you invite them, give them prashad, no, try to purify them. They will be happy, they will help. But it doesn't mean that you become one of them. We always be aloof. Because you favor one, and tomorrow in power is somebody else, and they say, oh, because you favor this one, then now we will crash you. Politics. We should not get into politics. So, therefore, devotees should be living, you know, just chanting the holy name and be absorbed in devotional service, doing what's necessary. And you know, things will be coming in life. Just one should take it as it is and go with it. Learn to be satisfied with whatever comes. Then, religiously, religious wars are happening. Israel and Palestine, you know, throwing rockets at each other, right? Then, even, even the Arabs, they fight among each other, and Christians. And then, no, Hindus. Where is the happiness? So, it's not there. Because the whole world is being disturbed. And, 
culturally. What is the culture? We see, you now, Srila Prabhupada talks about the Vedic culture, Krishna culture. No. And in India, it is disappearing. It's still present, but it's disappearing. Why? Because there is so much of influence of the West. So, previously, the men would be wearing dhotis, no, the, the ladies would be wearing saris. But now, it's just from the West it comes to Bombay, and from Bombay then no, to the whole India. Just the Western culture. Miniskirts, no, just, just anything, whatever flies in the West. Forgetting the culture. Then previously the, the people would be performing pujas, yagyas, sacrifices. But now nobody does. Because they don't know why they are doing. The parents, they are unable to tell the children you know, why one is doing this puja, this worship. It's all just pure, no, not even pure, it's the attempt to be a karmakanda. But it, it's all hodgepodge. And therefore all bogus. And therefore it's not sustainable. And cannot continue. And it's against the Shastra. If it would be karmakanda properly performed, okay, at least this is part of the Shastra, part of the Vedas, it will be done and it will purify the performer. But it's not possible. It's not done. And then they keep killing animals in the name of religion. But it's all bogus and these creates very heavy reactions. And the worst reactions then come to the leaders. Yeah, like there was the the, the story of well illustrated stories how how important or how much how much uh, responsibility their leaders have. So there was a dog and the dog then lying on the street was sleeping and then there was one brahmana walking and then no brahmana then yes brahmana owns owns the street on the road but brahmanas should be very merciful so they should not harm living entities so if the dog is lying there even though the road is his so he can go around but instead the brahmana just he, he being very nasty brahmana because uh, he was not satisfied with with himself so being nasty and not merciful he just kicks the dog off the road let the dog just make some noise and then, okay, goes away. But it was during the time of Ramachandra. So the dog was not just like any street dog. The dog, he went to Lord Ramachandra to complain. This is injustice. I didn't do anything wrong. And he was talking actually. Then he complained. This is injustice. I was lying there, not doing anything. I was not harming anyone. Why was I kicked off the road? And then Lord Ramachandra, he was also surprised by the thoughts and then by also that he is quite intelligent. So then he, he told him, he told, Lord Ramachandra told the dog, then, look, you seem to be very intelligent. 
then what do you think will be the suitable punishment for the brahmana? And the dog, then now he says, at the hills, there is one monastery. And in that monastery, then there are monks, but the monks are not good. They are not well behaved. They are very sinful. Okay. And there is no head. The head, head priest. Head monk. So make the Brahmana the head monk of that monastery. What? The Brahmana, he's a poor Brahmana. He has nothing. If I make him a head of the monastery, then what's going to happen? He is going to be somebody. No, he will get position. So what kind of punishment is this? He is going to get promoted. So I, I don't see this as a punishment. Explain, please. So and then the dog said, all right, look. Every leader takes the karma of those who are subservient, who are, who are dependent on him. Takes one sixth of his karma of each person. So now these monks, they are sinful. And there are many of them. So then the karma, one sixth of karma of each person will go to the head priest. So he will get a lot of bad karma. And he will be not in hell for a very, very long time. So that is punishment. And look, wow, okay. That's, uh, that's very severe. But wait a minute then, how do you know that? And the dog replied, well, previously, I was the head priest. So I know it. So this is the position. Now we have the politicians, those who are, they don't care about the people, they don't care about the earth, they don't care about anyone, about only themselves. Because there is no religion. On the, the religion nowadays is only senses. Worship and enjoy senses. By any means, any way. And it's encouraged. And now you can enjoy any way you like. You can be whoever you like. Previously there were only two genders. Now you hear somewhere now they had like 52 genders or something. Choose who you look to, like to be. Enjoy. And it's encouraged. So then, how is it possible that when such simple activities are going on, then the earth will be prosperous? It is not. Or is it? There is only one way how it can be achieved. By Harinam Sankirtan. So, that we are in the golden age of Kali Yuga. We should be now. No. All these things, Srila Prabhupada mentions, that people will be happy and satisfied in every way should be happening, but it's not. It's because we are not putting enough effort. The only possibility how it can be done is by spreading the holy name if in every town and village. We have to endeavor. We have to do it. Nobody is going to do it for us. It's our responsibility. So, we have to find a way how we can contribute in the movement of Lord Chaitanya. How we can perform, what kind of devotionals can we perform to contribute in that? Each and every individual. 
That's very important. So we need to study Shri Prabhupada's books because everything is written in those books. How we can do it? How we can work for on ourselves to become strong, to become pure, so that we can go out and help others. Right? Like you have in the airplane when no, they tell you when there is a loss of oxygen, then the mess comes. But then they say first you help yourself, then you help others. Because if you try to help others but you don't have oxygen, then you may pass out and then you may not help anyone. So we should help ourselves. And how? By being serious in devotional activities. Serious looking for good, for sadhu sangha. Discussing Krishna Katha among devotees, not Prajalpa. That way, then we will be able to know what we can do and to help others. That way, then the movement can spread. And all these, Mr. Prabhupada says that the earth will be very prosperous, people will be happy economically, religiously, culturally, politically. Everything will happen. But how fast is it going to happen? It's up to us. That it's going to happen, yes, it, it's going to happen. But are we going to contribute for it? Or we have to for, wait for somebody else who will contribute? How fast it's going to be? That's up to us. So we can make the decision right now and go for it. Hare Krishna. Any question? Maybe just one. Sorry, for two minutes. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, you spoke about the quality of satisfaction that Ramana was unsatisfied and that's why he behaved in such a manner. So, uh, can you uh, share some of your thoughts about how we can cultivate this quality in our own lives? Of okay. Satisfaction? okay. Actually, what we should, we should always you know, work on the, you know, the quality Amanina. It means, you no, know, ex don't expect things for yourself. Whatever comes, just take it. And always see it in the relation how we can use it. You may not know immediately how to use it. But because it comes to you, then just it's supposed to be. For us, when something good comes, it's not difficult for us to see that uh, as a good thing. Somebody gives us some money, right? Oh, yeah, no, that I deserve it. I'm, no, I have no problem with that. But someone comes, hey, give me money. Oh, no, why me? Why? I'm suffering. No, then we have difficulty. But we should see it always and be undisturbed. Because if we are disturbed, then what happens? Karma, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Mada, Matsarya. And it's finished. So that's why the Brahmana was uh, disturbed. He had desires, but the desires were not fulfilled. So Krodha was in his heart. Moha. He, was, he didn't know what he was supposed to do. He didn't, he didn't think about walking around the dog. He just angry, kick. And that's how no, he spelled a disaster for himself. So if we are satisfied, there is no need to exercise karma. Because karma doesn't get always fulfilled. Most of the time not. Not fulfilled karma creates Kroda. So if you are not trying to over desire, then there is no need, there, there is no Kroda going to develop. And then you can be Dhira, like we poised. Yes? Okay. Gruntaraj Shimad Bhagavatam ki? Shra Prabhupada ki? Jai Nitai Gopanande.